Hi everybody, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, in the news, I want to talk about those day beds that are being rented on the new icon of the seas. We have a cruise ship that was having issues with its engine, a pretty new cruise ship after all. We have Carnival Cruise Line talking good and bad about pricing. One, they're saying one thing might go up, and in the other voice, they're saying they just had a record-breaking quarter. So my first news topic is the Enchanted Princess. Well, the Enchanted Princess was having some issues. It was supposed to leave port around 6 p.m. on its way to Gibraltar. Well, uh, it didn't. It didn't leave for 10 more hours. Uh, apparently, one of the thrusters, which is the side little propellers that are attached to them, that add maneuverability when you're pulling into dock, well, one of them wasn't quite working properly, and they put out divers and apparently were able to get it fixed enough that they could set sail. Now, they are saying that this should not affect any of the itinerary. They actually got it fixed. It should not slow down the speed. It wasn't a main engine issue. So that is really good news. A thruster is a lot, you know, if they usually have three, if one has to shut down, they still have two. Makes it harder, not impossible to maneuver into ports. But the good news, it does seem like they got it repaired because it was sailing yesterday at full speed around 22 knots. And normally on this cruise, they would be going about 17 when they first leave port. Obviously they were trying to make up time. To get to Gibraltar this morning, I checked Cruise Mapper this morning and they have arrived in Gibraltar on time, which is good news for everybody on the Enchanted Princess. Looks like that ship is working fine now and hopefully the thruster issue doesn't keep popping up. Next, we also have Carnival Cruise Line. Now, Carnival Cruise Line just did an interview and they said, uh, you know what? A, a fuel surcharge is not off the table. That's right. They, If you look at your contract, they always have that if fuel prices skyrocket for some reason, they have a right to add a fuel surcharge even after you've paid for your cruise and charge you when you're on the ship. Now, most cruise lines are very apprehensive about doing this, right? All of a sudden you get, you know, 3,000 passengers coming off a ship saying, hey, we just had to pay $38 more per person for fuel surcharge. It would be very negative press and a lot of people would, you know, <laughs> probably start staying away from that cruise line. However, they said with the rising cruise, you know, they're not taking anything off the table right now to save money. They've They've readjusted their itineraries to save money. They say they saved over $350 million a year this year, this year going by compared to 2019 where, you know, by cutting back the fuel costs and being more conservative in their usage by maybe changing a couple of their destinations. Remember how many cruise ships change their destinations? Not to mention they got rid of some of their older ships during the pandemic and brought on newer ships, which are much more fuel efficient and some of them are LNG, et cetera. So they have done that, but they did say that, hey, nothing's off the table. Now they would not go retroactively and start adding a fuel surcharge. They're talking about bookings in the future and going forward. And let me be clear, they did say they have no intention of doing that in the near future, but again, nothing is off the table. The timing couldn't have been worse though, to come out with something like that because they just had their third quarter announcement for revenue and they announced that they made over a billion dollars in profit. Even with the high cost of running the cruise line, even with their debt that they have to pay off, even with the fuel where it is, they still managed to make in one quarter a billion dollars profit. Not too bad. I guess some of those cutbacks and some of those extra charges they've been doing have been working pretty well. But uh, yeah, maybe you shouldn't talk about raising more prices in the same week that you come out with a billion dollar profit margin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about those 
day beds on the icon of the seas because uh, I got some thoughts on them but I'm, I'm a, a rather unique person because I don't usually would do these things anyway but before I get there let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already if you want to keep up to date with everything going on in cruising from possible raises in fuel costs for your, for your cruise to cruise ships breaking down to destinations to shore excursions that are worthwhile and maybe not worthwhile to rising costs of everything and maybe some tips that might just save you money doesn't cost you anything to hit that little subscribe button with the notification bell on but it really does help the channel out and i really would appreciate it well the icon of the seas is going to be the largest cruise ship in the world she set sail in january uh, i'm on the inaugural sailing i was invited as a travel agent down to check out a three-day cruise and for now, I'm still scheduled about three weeks later to be on that ship for a full week uh, that I booked for myself. However, I did see this article about these day beds. And these day beds are full size beds at the aft of the ship in the hideaway area. And they, of course, have some of the best views. If you're going to rent them, they better have the best views on the ship. There better not be other people's heads in my way. However, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, because <laughs> if you look at, say, the uh, ones that are in the pool, there are three day beds in the actual pool, and these will rent from $250 on a uh, port day to $350 for a sea day. Now, these are your private little day bed things, yes, but you're in a public pool, where there's other people all around you. Are you telling me that not a single person is gonna be hanging off your day bed or putting their arm on their day bed or setting their drinks on your day bed, especially if you're not happen to be in it at that time kind of thing, right? Or how many times are you gonna to have to have kids in there and you're gonna to have to chase, you know, they don't know any better. They're just in the pool having fun because it's open to kids as well. Are you telling me that you're going to have somebody there monitoring who gets on and who gets off all day long. You're going to have like a, a lifeguard to guard three day beds in the pool all day. I, I don't think they're going to do that. But yeah, I don't. $350 for a day bed in the middle of a pool in the sun. It comes with champagne. It comes with a little table. You know, it comes with towels. And I guess it's a good spot to cool off and everything. Sounds good. It just, it doesn't seem like a private thing to me. It just seems like, hey, anybody can jump on my day bed and kids are going to try and jump on it to jump in the water. It, it just seems a little odd to me. But I will say it will probably stop a lot of fights about... You know, chair, you think a person near a pool deck is a chair hog. Can you imagine these? <laughs> Can you imagine how many people are going to be hogging these? And that'll stop that completely. Also, they have the ones that are just ocean view. And again, they're full-size day beds, but they're in the sun. There's no shade. There's no nothing. And those still go for $200 or $250, depending if you're at the sea or in the port. Again, um... How many people are going to try and sit there even though you rented it unless they have somebody there monitoring it all day long? I don't know how many frustration I would have if I get up to go get a hamburger and uh, or go back to my room and change into something else and I come back and again somebody has taken my spot. I would get very upset with that. So I hope they have somebody there monitoring. My own choice if I'm going to do something like this, is they have a, cast uh, a casita. Uh, basically, it's a day bed, but it has a roof on it. It has a cover on it, and it's more private. Nobody usually goes into these kind of things. It's on the pool deck, obviously, um, but you're in an area where obviously it doesn't seem to be you know, if I see a covered area with a lounge chair and a tables and everything, I'm assuming that's for rent. I'm assuming somebody's paying for that. And so I, I probably wouldn't go in there. However, those day beds in the pool, those day beds by the view, I think people are going to be scrambling on those and there's going to be arguments left and right. But I'll let you know when I'm on the ship. Well, I, what do you guys think? Do you think $350? Do you think... 
they're going to monitor it all day? Do you think they're like going to have one poor person running back and forth from the two areas to make sure nobody sits there? I don't know. I, I don't know how this is going to work. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want we'll to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.